Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Haunter, the Fitness of a Mermaid. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how I repaired my tail tiger. She got some damage over my birthday weekend this year in the lake. Our lake has zebra mussels and I did not think it was as bad as it was, but she's got three marks on her, uh, all on the bottom, and they're pretty rough. The zebra mussels just about cut all the way through the fabric. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to practice with this what's called Odie Coat by Odif. Uh, Shop Vancouver Mermaid, Mermaid Courtney, the creator of Tiger, uh, said she was going to try and use this stuff on some of her tails. So I went ahead and grabbed some off of Amazon to try as well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out parchment paper as was recommended by a bunch of stuff online. And I'm using some arm cuffs I got from Courtney as well. I'm gonna try on the inside as well as seeing if I can seal the seams to keep them from fraying. It comes with a little card, but you can also use paint brushes, sponge brushes, anything else that can help apply stuff like this. Uh, I went ahead and grabbed my sponge brush. Some stuff is also going to be out of frame, I apologize. This is an angle I'm not used to working with, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting parchment paper inside of one arm cuff on both sides to get it ready to practice sealing the seams with. The other one I'm just going to put Odie Coat on the excess fabric on the outside of the stitch that conjoins the ends of the fabric together to make the cuff. If you wanna get your iron ready at this point, do not put it past setting one. Anything past setting one will damage both the OD coat and your fabric. So the Odie Coat is kind of a silicone-y looking material. It's really cool. It's got this really cool sheen to it and everything. And it globs in a really interesting way, like halfway cured silicone. Uh, really easy to work with as well. You'll see here when I put it on the card, I see that I've maybe gotten a little bit too much. So I hesitate, put a little bit back and go back to it. It smooths on like butter. Really easy to apply with the card. It's also pretty easy to apply with the sponge brush, but I had to pick up the arm cuff just to see if I was even putting stuff on there. It gets a little tricky to see depending on what color fabric you're using, but I just, I smooth it out. I check to make sure I've used up the stuff on the card and yeah, so that application was very easy. Now I just let that dry. Now I'm moving on to the seams and this Took me a little bit of figuring out, but I figured out how to apply it, and it really doesn't take a whole lot. OD Coat is meant to waterproof fabric. It can be used as a fabric glue. This one, I only put one coat on each side because it was just meant to seal it. It doesn't have to be waterproof. But the more coats you put on, the shinier it gets. So this is gonna end up with a little bit more of a matte look. All right, then after 30 minutes, I come back and now I'm gonna use the iron. I will say I'm gonna to touch my iron, but it is turned off. So when you see my hand touch the hot part of the iron, it's not actually hot. First, I'm just gonna make sure that it's actually all dry. And again, my iron is not turned on yet. Not gonna go after over the first setting. I'm gonna let that warm up a little bit and then I'm going to move the Odie coat and start working on figuring out how to place my parchment paper because you wanna have a layer in between your iron and the Odie coat, whatever you're ironing with the Odie coat on it because you don't want it to stick to your iron. I'm gonna check with my wrist because that's the more sensitive part of my, my hand area. That tends to feel heat better. And I'm just gonna try and evenly and gently press down. With one coat like this, and especially with how thin I made it, it's not gonna take a lot of ironing time. And it really didn't. It sealed pretty much as soon as I did the first two run-bys with the iron. And I could barely see it. If it gets hit by the, the light correctly, you can see it shine. But other than that, it's practically invisible.
and then I'm pulling the parchment paper out a little bit so that it doesn't seal to the edge when I iron it. And if you see me in the video rubbing my fingers a lot, it's not because the Odie coat is connecting to my skin, attaching to my skin. It's a sensory thing. I have skin sensory issues, so touching the Odie coat, feeling it, messing with the seams causes me to, to rub my fingers. Now I'm just gonna roll right side back out and check the seams. And I did notice that when I applied it, some did get on the outside. And when it seals, it seals. It's there permanently. But otherwise, again, barely can see it unless it's pointed out. The stretch is really nice. It stretches with the fabric because it's kind of that silicone-y type feel. It's, it's very stretchy. Here, I've gone ahead and just cut out the rest of working on the arm cuffs because it was a couple of 30 minute sits but I went ahead and did the edges on both and they're all done. You can barely see the Odie coat on the edges. They're fully sealed. They won't fray anymore. It's wonderful. Now on to Tiger. So this is the front of Tiger's flute. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it so you can see the damage, the difference between the front and the back. And then where her three spots are, once I get her smoothed out a little bit more. The first one is up there. They're all about the same length as well. And then the other two are down there. They're a little bit more hidden. And those were caused by zebra mussels. They're an invasive species and they're in a good majority of Minnesota lakes, which is a huge bummer. And they will wreck everything. Here now, I'm making sure that I'm putting a layer of parchment paper in between because if I don't, this could potentially seep through and glue the two sides of fabric together which means I will not be able to get my monofin back in, and that's no good. Also, please, disclaimer, do not ever iron your tails or work on your tails with the monofin still in them. If it's a silicone tail, you shouldn't be ironing the tail anyways, but if it's a fabric tail like Tiger and you're working on it, take the monofin out ahead of time. Do not ever iron silicone, rubber, plastic, anything like that. You will damage your monofin and you will damage your tail and you will damage your iron. Here now I'm taking athletic tape and just going in and making sure there's no gunk, any dandruff, fur, dried lake gunk, anything that could potentially get sealed in with it. Just making sure that's getting taken out. I use the athletic tape because it's a little bit nicer on the fabric. Masking tape wasn't gonna do what I needed and I wasn't about to use scotch tape or duct tape on my tail. And then I'm gonna go in with the Odie coat again with the card first and I'm just gonna smooth in, making sure I get in every single rip as I go. And now I wait 30 minutes. Again, I'm gonna make sure I check to see that the Odie coat has fully dried before I go in to iron it. Checking my temperature, make sure it's not too hot. And beyond what my table is trying to tell you, 
I am not applying that much pressure. It's just enough to make sure that it's making contact underneath the parchment paper to send the heat through, to transfer the heat through to the Odie coat to get it to seal. Checking to make sure it's fully cured, fully sealed. Here I'm feeling to see whether or not one coat is enough and determining that it's not. And I'm also going to go and flip Tiger inside out and go with one coat on the inside as well. Just because I was paranoid enough that only putting a coat on the outside, two coats on the outside, would cause damage to happen on the inside. So here now I'm just trying to press in Odie coat rather than smooth it on to see if I can make sure that it makes a, almost like it fills it in and smooths out the fabric so that it's back to being just one layer rather than having indentations where the, the slices are, if that makes sense. Basically trying to add skin where their skin is lost. Then I go in, make sure I've got it all where I want it with the cord, taking off any access, and then we'll wait another 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and iron, rinse and repeat. And yeah. Here now I've got Tiger flipped inside out. You can kind of see where each spot of damage is. The Odie coat seeped through, which I knew was going to happen, which made it easier for me to find where I needed to put the Odie coat on this side. So that was nice, but I'm just going to smooth it on because it's on the inside. I'm not too worried about going around the edges and off the mark. It's not going to be super visible and going off a little bit isn't going to hurt anything. If anything, it'll help it a little bit more because you're giving it extra coverage. In the future, if I feel like I need to add another coat on the inside, it's going to be very easy to do. But for now, it's just one coat. Again, I also made sure that there was parchment paper in between so that it doesn't seep through and glue the sides together. And this should be my last bit of ironing. Pardon my camera having a problem. Autofocus is a love-hate relationship. We now have a fully sealed, fully healed monofin. Fluke, not monofin. So now I can take Tiger back out into the water, give it a test run, see how well the Odie coat does in the water. Here she is with her monofin back in. So her damage is still going to be visible, especially the top one. But otherwise, it's sealed really well, and it's really only visible from up close. So, yeah. Don't forget to go check out Courtney's channel as well. Uh, she, again, she's the till maker. She's who made Tiger for me, and she's the one who recommended I try out this product. I hope you all enjoyed this, and I will see y'all on the flip side.